So now that you've seen an example of how to apply the predefined non-concurrent collector mechanisms that are available in the Java class libraries, let's talk about how to implement custom non-concurrent collectors. And again, as you'll see, this is going to uh, leverage some of the stuff that we've talked about. In particular, it's going to use the of uh, factor method that's defined in the collector interface. All right, so, and we're gonna show some examples of non-concurrent collector implementations that appear in our simple search stream program that we've been using as the kind of the running example, the running case study throughout the, all these uh, lessons for the last couple weeks. So here is the toString method. toString is defined on the search results class. And what the toString method does, as we'll see in a second, is it creates a, a collector that converts a list of result objects into a uh, string. And it does it in a very clever way, as we'll see here in a second. And this is implemented in the search results class. So as you can see, we have a list of search results. We convert that list of search results into a stream. And then we immediately collect the stream. So this is an example where there are no intermediate operations. It just goes directly from a stream of result objects into collecting the stream of result objects. And all the magic here is going to happen in the collector that we're going to create using the of factory method from the collector interface that makes a new collector. So you can see we say stream.collect, collect.of, and then we're going to give the various lambda expressions or method references in order to be able to create a custom collector. In this particular case, the supplier that creates the accumulator object is going to be a string joiner. And a string joiner class is something that's going to be used, as you can see here, to put a vertical bar. This, this is the thing that's going to join between each string. So between each of the strings, we're going to join these two things together using a vertical bar. OK, so that's, that's, the, that's the accumulator object that we're using to accumulate the elements of the stream. They'll be joined together as, as a, in a string joiner. This is the accumulator factory method, and what it's doing is we give it a joiner and a result object, J and R, and it goes ahead and it says J, which in this case is the joiner, which we made up here. It says J dot add. So we're going to add a new string to the string joiner, and we're going to say R, because R is the result object, to string. So that's going to convert the integer, or that's going to take the result object, which is a wrapper for an integer, and it's going to convert that integer to a string. So it's going to basically add the new string representation of an integer to the end of the joiner and put a vertical bar between it. So that's how the vertical bar gets there. Yes, Sam. Uh, well, if we weren't using type deduction and we use the feature, if you, if you go into IntelliJ or Android Studio or whatever, and you go over here and you kind of highlight this, and then you go to the, the little menu option, it'll say expand to, and it'll expand this to say uh, string joiner J comma uh, result R. So this is just sort of shorthand because I kind of knew what it was. But um, the other way you could kind of know this would be if you knew the types of these things. So the first type is always whatever the factory method up here made for the type of the accumulator object that's used for the framework. And then the second one is whatever the, uh, the types that you're accumulating into the elements in the stream in this case. But that's a great question. <clears throat> I could have expanded that. And, and originally had it expanded, but it was kind of ugly, so I just left it in the concise form. But yeah, that's a great question. Third thing is we combine. Oh, so then the next, the next uh, thing we pass in to the of method is the combiner, which is only used for parallel streams, but we need to have it there in case someone uses a parallel stream version of this. Obviously, this is a sequential stream, so we're not going to be using this method, but it needs to be there anyway. And this is called merge, and this takes two string joiner objects and merges them together. And so merge is a method that's part of the string joiner class, and that, of course, is a factory method that's going to be used as the combiner to merge those two things together. And then the 
fourth parameter that we pass here is going to be the finisher. And so finisher is going to be used here to convert a string joiner, because remember we had a string joiner object that we were adding stuff to, and now we're going to convert the string joiner to a string. And the way we do that is by passing in the toString method. And I should probably have pointed out earlier that there's a couple different versions of of. There's a version of of that takes a finisher, and there's a version of of that does not take a finisher. And so this is the one that takes the finisher. So if you take a look here, this is the, the finisher version of this. And so that converts the string joiner into a string. And you can see what we're doing is we're collecting everything into a string, because after all, this is the toString method. So this is going to return a string, which as you can see here, will be basically all the indices separated by the vertical bar, which we got by using a string joint. OK, so pretty cool. So that's one example. The second example we're going to look at here is another collector we talked about earlier. We uh, talked about this collector when we were discussing the, um, some of the variants that were printing slices. And so we had this way of being able to print a slice of something. And, and part of that was basically to merge together all the result lists so that they would all appear together in one long result list. And we did this with something called two downstream collector. So two downstream collector is a factory method that creates a downstream collector that merges the result list together. So you can see that this is a collector that takes a search results object, and it goes ahead and will accumulate into a list of search results result objects, and it returns a list of search result result objects. And in fact, it's going to basically not even bother with uh, any finisher because it doesn't need one. It, it's just going to take the result of the list, and that'll be the result of the collector. OK, so you can look at this in the word searcher uh, file if you want to see how it's implemented. Once again, we use the collector.of factor method to make a new collector. We pass in array list new, like we did before. And then the accumulator uh, factor method is more interesting. So what this does is this takes the uh, results list, because that's what we have, a list of search results, and a given search result, because that's what we have in our stream. And we take the results list from the search result parameter, which is what we got from the stream, and we simply append it to the ever-growing result list. So we're just growing the result list by appending the result list from the next search result at the end of it. And then we have a combiner, which again merges two result lists into a single result list. Very simple. And that's all we do. We don't have anything else in this example because, as you can see, the finisher is going to be um, basically the result of this, this whole thing. So that's essentially how we can implement the downstream collector. And that, if you go back and you look at the earlier example, when we were doing the print slice method, you'll see how that gets used. OK, so a couple of examples. These are very simple examples of using, uh, creating collectors, but they're very common. And you can see that we can use the collector.of factor method to do all this stuff. We don't have to do anything more complicated. If you have more complex custom collectors, especially ones that have sophisticated finishers, for instance, then you're probably better off implementing the collector interface rather than trying to use collector of, because you'll end up with very complicated um, parameters that are being passed there. You, you could do it, but it's, it gets ugly. And if you want an example of that, you can take a look at this example here. We'll talk about this example later when we get to the part of the course that discusses completable futures. And this is a much, much cooler collector than the ones we've looked at so far. But we'll get to that later. Again, if you're interested in learning more about custom collectors, you can take a look at this video. This is by my colleague, Angelica Longer, and she talks at length about many different aspects of implementing custom collectors and applying predefined collectors and, and all that kind of good stuff. OK, so that's the end of that discussion. Now, this, this, all this stuff should be helpful for you because you have to implement a uh, custom collector for assignment 2B. And if you go back and watch these videos, that should be very helpful because they kind of walk through the sort of canonical ways to do that. And, and your solution should be very similar to what you see here.